<clears throat> One of the big questions that I get from writers all the time is, do I plot out the book first or don't I? And there is a lot of contradictory advice from a lot of interesting people. Uh, what I want to do is give you just a sense of <clears throat> what I think some of those uh, arguments are. And I want to tell you two things that I think are new into that conversation. So here are some of the people I've heard talk about it. Either people that I've, I've met or people I've listened to or read. James Patterson, David Baldacci, Richard Russo, Richard Ford, Irving Wallace, John Irving, I don't know why they're all men, actually they're not, uh, Margaret Atwood, Joyce Carol Oates, and Stephen King, although he didn't talk about it much. Here are the, the two extremes that I've noticed work like this. On one side, you've got James Patterson, who says, plot out everything. Not only does he plot out everything, but he writes what is effectively a precis for the entire book. So he has like one paragraph per chapter, and then he, in a sense, fills in the extra words. <clears throat> On the other side of this, and he sells a tremendous number of books, right? He sells more books than anybody else in the whole world, and he's rich and famous, and I'm sure he's very, very happy. On the other side of this, you have Richard Russo, uh, winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Empire Falls, and his argument, it's not an argument, but his approach, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm close, is come up with really great characters, give them a problem, and hope for the best. So you, you, you push. Now, both of them are successful. And then there's one that's kind of in the middle, which is kind of interesting. And uh, uh, and it's not that I'm going to pick, but I want to explain some of this. And the one that's, that I think is also important to remember is Richard Ford, uh, who also won the Pulitzer for, I'm pretty sure it was Independence Day, which is a wonderful book. He said the first time you write a book, you write it forward. The second time you write a book, you write it backwards. What does all this mean? Well, the first thing is, I think there is a mistake under almost all of these arguments. And that is, the, the, the mistake is thinking that there's some inherent choice between plotting out the book first and, in a sense, freewheeling it. And here's as freewheeling as this hand. Just work with me here. I would argue that here's your, here's your plotting guy, right? Here's James Patterson. James Patterson is still entering into the world of not knowing what his story is at some point. At some point, whether he's writing it down or not, he's freewheeling it in his head. Now, he might be taking long walks through the olive groves in Cyprus or whatever the heck he does all day. But at some point, form is coming out of the void. Something, some structure is coming out of the nothingness. Everybody who is an artist, dancers, poets, musicians, any kind of writer, uh, filmmakers, it, it goes on and on. Designers, for the most part, who aren't exactly artists, but sometimes they are artists. They're kind of in that middle zone. They're always going from nothing to something and always going from a murky front end into some sort of structure. Patterson, and now I'm, this is a supposition, but I, I think you can't avoid it, is, is mulling it around in his head until he basically comes up with a story. He hasn't written anything down yet. When he outlines it all, to him, outlining is writing. And I would argue that the things that he doesn't really care about Quite frankly, brilliant characterization, insightful dialogue, rich description, you know, the kinds of things that, and, you know, not, not, not to be pejorative, but his readers want to watch television often. They, they, they want 
three page chapters and they want to burn through the story and they want plot 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 and they get it and they get it he delivers what his readers want and and god bless them all and and happiness reigns but he he is not working through the interiority of characters he's not interested in that and so he comes up with a plot and then the other this, that other stuff comes later richard ford will be th sorry not richard um Russo, Rick Russo, is going to be coming up with problematics, settings, and other things, and he's going to dive into it, and then he's going to be, in a sense, there's an abductive process where you write, you look at what you've written, and then you decide how you feel about what you've written, and either decide it was better than what you had anticipated, and you go with it, or you decide that, as lovely as it is, it's somehow taking you on a track that you don't on which you don't want to go and so you kill your darling and you 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 force the story back to shape but that constant process that abductive process of create reflect create reflect and that act of reflection is going to require choice because you don't just reflect and mull you reflect and act you you either keep going or you stop and sometimes uh, and I said there were two things. So one of them is writing is taking place at all times. It's just that what we think of as writing, which is the s archetypal notion of the human being sitting down in front of the computer and tapping away or the typewriter or, you know, the, the, the Hemingway kind of thing. You got to get that out of your head. It's the movement from no story to story is the initial part of the writing of the writing. Not the writing process, but the writing. Everything's a process, right? That's what George Carlin said. He was also a writer. Now, the second thing is that everybody seems to treat this as though it is innate to their characters. In other words, I'm the kind of person who, right? And people seem to seem to want to define themselves by whether they're their plotters or you know free wheelers but there's a deeper reality than that um and and i realize i'm taking a pot shot at, at everybody but i you know i think they're all wrong and it goes like this certain projects have their own imperatives what that means is if you want to write a story about a man and a woman who are in love, and this is their impending breakup, and it's going to be a story of uh, the descent of a marriage into chaos and divorce, and then to see whether or not there's some kind of hope at the end. That's not a great story, but let's, but it's, but it's, it, it, it's, it's emblematic of a kind of uh, character-driven experience. At the beginning, you might have been inspired to attend to that theme. For any number of reasons, right? You have something in your alone life, some somebody else's life. You think there's an aspect to to um, to marriage that people haven't been exploring. You think there's something about um, you know gender dynamics that that you feel is changing in the world, and there's a different way of telling a story, even though it's an old story. But there's there's new forms that it can take. You think that you have an inter an entertaining voice. Uh, I, I don't know. Something's something's eating at you, and you decide you're going to give it a go. If your theme led that way, you don't really have a story yet. In other words, there isn't a central tension and there isn't an obstacle that they have to overcome. And, and, and you don't have it all in your head. You've got a theme. You also don't have characters. So you don't know who Rebecca is and you don't know who William is. You, you don't know who these people are yet. As you start to write, hopefully, these people become real. Rebecca isn't a filler. She's not. She's not a. She's not just an empty shell, and she's not a tool for the writer. Eventually, she's going to have her own opinions and own thoughts, and you're going to come to understand as a writer. You're going to come to understand who she is, what motivates her, what she thinks is funny, what what uh, what her philosophies are, what drives her, what gives her dimensionality and distinctiveness. Same thing with the other guy, with with William, the only guy. 
And then there's that third thing, which is the interaction between the two, right? These two characters, these two people are going to have something that at one point must have brought them together, de facto, and something that is now pulling them apart. But you don't know what that is yet. So as you start to understand who these people are, that story is going to take on its own life. The idea for me of plotting that all out at the beginning in, an, in, a, in, a, in a Patterson way seems almost impossible. Because you're, otherwise you wouldn't really be learning. And if you're not learning, and if you're not surprised by what you've been creating, I have no idea how it is you're going to surprise the reader. I, I, just, I just don't see it. On the other hand, you have a story, structurally speaking, is a bank heist, right? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna rob a bank and you want some of them to get away and some of them not to. And you're gonna set it someplace exotic, you know, I, I don't know. There's some part of Spain that you find absolutely beautiful and you wanna set it up in Galicia and, and you're gonna have a bank robbery there. Um, I just saw Money Heist, so, which is very, very good. It's on Netflix. It's in Spanish. Um, anyway, you want to make something like that. Uh, and it's going to be a thriller, maybe a comedic thriller. You kind of need to know how that thing's going to end. Now, in the Patterson way, you might have to just mull around and walk around in the woods and figure out what the big aha thing is, right? Like Inside Man, which is a movie. Eventually, they built a fake wall and he's inside he's the inside man and then days later he broke out of the wall and walked out the front door okay ruin the movie for you but it's a decade later or two i don't even know but you need to you're gonna have to figure that out at some point once you figure that out you can build your heist movie towards the end right you need to know the end with the relationship story you might not maybe they don't break up maybe they get back together maybe they meet somebody else maybe there's a third person involved that one might need to develop so let's go back on the, the family relationship, back to Richard Ford. If you take Richard Russo's, I'm not mixing up the names. If you take Richard Russo's things, like just sort of hope for the best, then like Richard Ford said, you are um, writing forward. Once you've written your manuscript, you've got your 350 pages of this thing. Now you have a sense of what it is. You're not done. You have, at that point, what James Patterson had on a napkin. They're actually the same thing. And while he can move stuff around on his napkin, I guess you can't move stuff on a napkin. Work with me. Over here, you're going to do what Richard Ford said, which is now that you've written it forward, now that you know the story, you're going to write it backwards. What that means is now that I know the end, now that I know what happens to, to, to Rebecca and William, now I know what they're going to face along the way, now I know what the basic beats of the story are, the basic movement, the basic arc, now you're going to go back to page one and start reading what you've written and ask yourself at every single point the following question, which will change your life as a writer. Why am I telling them this? You must have an answer to that. There are many good answers to that. But good ones could be because it advances the plot, advances understanding of the character, because it, it has to bring reader joy. That's pretty much what John Gardner would be telling you. It has to bring some kind of pleasure. It's something has to be advancing. Something has to be moving forward. Whether it's your understanding of the character as a reader, your understanding of the characters, your understanding of the setting, your, your, uh, 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 getting a sense of place, getting a sense of mood. There could be any number of good answers to that, but there has to be an answer to it. If you don't have an answer to that, you're wasting your, these are bad words. You're going to get edited out. A good editor will say, I don't know why I'm reading this. Lovely. Don't know why it's here. Cut it out. That doesn't mean take out everything that isn't directly related to the plot. That's a philosophical issue. That's up for you to work out. Um, Steve Martin, by the way, who's incredibly articulate about his own process of writing, who is a screenwriter and a comedian and a novelist, and is very, very smart on this. I recommend his master class if you ever sign up for those. Um, this is the cheap version. Uh, he's very articulate about that. Um, but, and then he tell a quick story. Uh, he was doing Roxanne, and there's, and at one point he said, and I'm, I'm relating his story, 
is that he said at one point he was messing around with a screenplay and saying, I think I want to try to edit it only for plot. And he started cutting things down. At one point, a friend of his said, uh, I forget who it was, but maybe it's the direct, uh, director, I'm not sure, said, if you do that, then the scene where he's up in a tree and he falls out and a bunch of old ladies show up and he says, and he has to come up quickly with an explanation for why he was spying in the woman's uh, and Daryl Hannah's uh, window. And he says, aliens, aliens showed up and they only like to have sex with older women because, and I'm quoting, they really know what they're doing. And then all the women go, yes, yes, we do. That's true. And he goes, yes, they're over there. Anyway, it's a really funny, cute little scene. It lasts maybe a minute and a half or something like that. And his director friend said, um, you know you're going to have to cut that out because it, it does nothing. He says, oh, no, 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 I'm not cutting that. And so that's exactly it. Do you, do you, do you write to plot? Do you do not write to plot? Or do you write to joy? But have an answer. Be in control. That's the key. So what all this comes down to is this. Some projects are have to be freewheeling. Otherwise, you're not listening to yourself as a writer. And others, you really need to know how the thing ends from the beginning. I don't think, like Patterson, that you need to know every single thing. I think the metaphor to use, and that I would recommend, is sailing. I'm not much of a sailor. But it works like this. You know where you're starting, which is this harbor, and you know where you're gonna end up. You're gonna end up at this harbor. Along the way, there's a lot of water. But there's not just water, there's wind. Maybe there's obstacles, right? There's any number of things. And there's weather and there's things that you want to see. Point is, you're going to have to tack. Now that's a pretty, it's not linear, but it's a pretty patterned thing. But it might be like this. And it might be like this. Hopefully not, right? It might just go like this <laughs> if you have a really bad day. You don't really know, but you need to have some sense of where you're going to depart from and where you're going to end up. Otherwise, you're going to end up nowhere. But if you want to go freewheeling, write forward, then write backwards, listen to yourself, and, and stop treating this, everybody, please, as though it's just some sort of character-driven thing. In other words, you, as the, re the writer, have to define yourself by this. Stop it. Okay, you got to get beyond that. You got to get analytically past that as well. Um, so those are my answers. What do I do? Partly depends on the project. Um, I always write forward and then write backwards. I, there's not a book that I've written that I haven't written at least three times. Some of them seven. Um, and I certainly err on the Rick Russo side of the equation, but with the and even even with a girl in green, which had uh, which had a well, with American by day, I had no idea where it was going to go. I was just I was just having so much fun writing it that I was just plowing through. And the scene where Irv is sending that other cop off in the wrong direction, I didn't know how that was going to end. That's the joy of the of being a writer. Um, in the girl in green, I didn't really know how Arwood and Benton were going to get out of that cave. I didn't, I, I, I was in, I had to revel in that experience for a while and figure out where it was going to go. It was very uncertain to me. Once it was written through, once I saw what I had done, I was able to rewrite. With Norwegian My Night, it was a little different because I, I thought of the ending to that book um, while I was waiting for my son to be born which is an odd thing, but it was a C-section, and so we knew exactly what was going to happen. And, you know, while my wife was being taken care of and everything, uh, they leave the men in the hallway with little booties on, and you just sit there like an idiot doing nothing, waiting till you're allowed to go in. And I know I should have been thinking about my wife, but I was thinking about the end of, of the book um, because I needed to distract myself too, and there was a lot of emotion going through, and Sheldon's relationship with the boy and then his relationship with his son was all in my mind, and it was all very emotional, but I really came up with the ending of that book. And so I, I knew in some ways how that was going to end um, the last lines, a bit like the way that uh, John Irving talks about it, about how he knows the last line of a book um, when he starts writing it, which I think is insane. I don't know how he does that. I'm not sure if it's just a thing that he says, but he's very convincing when he says it. Uh, and then I've written three subsequent novels afterwards that haven't been published yet, and we'll talk about that another day. So 20 minutes is my limit. That's it. Hope it's been helpful. Hope it's been interesting. Feel free to ask me uh, further questions about this. 
And um, uh, if you're any of the writers that I, I mentioned, uh, send me a note. Bye.